Hello and welcome to GMBN Tech. And this week we are joined by Mr. Richard Payne. Bonjour, everybody. So this is Ask GMBN Tech, where we get to answer your questions. So if you've got your own question, please get in the comments using the hashtag Ask GMBN Tech, and hopefully one of us can answer it on this very show. Right then, Henry, first question today from Alec Jones. I have quite a lot of fork play on my Fox 34 Performance Elites from 2018. Would you suggest getting them serviced or would they be okay to ride for a bit longer until he has the money to get them serviced? Yeah, I mean, if, you've, well, if he's had this fork from new, I would say ASAP get onto the case of warranting it. They 2018. Normally, yeah, so it might just be in there depending what time of the year he bought it. Okay. Sometimes parts do come like a two year um, manufacturer's defect and bushing play often is is considered that right. it's something that hasn't been done properly. So I would say don't wait, talk to where you got them from straight away, Okay. and hopefully they can send you some new lowers. Because what you don't want to be doing is letting that play develop. And you know, it's like the more play there is and the more parts are worn, the subsequently it snowballs. Then the more the damage you cause. The more damage you cause. And, mm. and what you want to really avoid is, at the moment, if you've just got better play, which is actually, you know, it's a re relatively common thing across yeah. brands, that's one thing, you can swap out the lowers or just install some new bushes. But when it starts to wear the fork legs, then it's like another thing and it's, it's, you're going to incur an even greater cost. So Very true. If, if you feel like, um, you know, you are out of warranty, I would say take the lowers off and inspect visually with a, okay. a, like a flashlight, the bushes, uh, and maybe yeah. speak to your local suspension centre because there's every chance that they can actually push in the bushes as a standalone job. Yeah, yeah. Instead of if we went to a bike shop, they might, you know, and it'd be the right thing to do in some ways, but they would probably suggest selling or buying some new lowers when mm. a suspension specialist might be able to actually just swap out the individual part. Very true. So that would be my advice anyway. I'm sure there's a very helpful tech video on how to give them a service. Yep, totally. We've got loads of videos on how to do a low leg service. And when, when, you, um, when you do inspect your bushes, you don't want there to be any like scoring marks. Ah, okay, you know, good the, tip. The bushing will be, they're essentially, um, the bush we slotted, and they do that to let oil migrate up and down the, the lower. To ah, lubricate, okay. to lubricate the um, to lubricate the seals and the foam rings. The, yep. the issue, I suppose, with slotted bushes is it does tend to lead to um, more scoring on the um, on the fork leg, and that's why you might send those striped. Is that know, because grime forks. can build up in there? It. I think it's probably. It's there's probably an element of that. I would imagine it's also to do with how load is placed upon the bush. Less surface area would then subsequently mean, I would imagine higher stress on the, yeah. on the surface that is contacted. Um, but speak to local service centre, or indeed if you've got a warranty, then just wave your receipt around mm. like a madman in a bike shop. And yeah. they'll be, well, Claim certainly it. good sir, <laughs> come this way <laughs> and, um, and, you, and you'll be okay. Excellent advice mate, excellent advice. Should we move on to question number two? Yes, let's do it. Okay, this is from Martin Schwartz. Hi, I'm six foot five tall, weigh 302 pounds and have a high bike all mountain 2.0. I love the bike, but the reach is a little too short and the handlebars are too low. To make things work out, I installed an 80mm rise bar and rotated it forwards quite a bit. My riding position is much better, but the handling has suffered and at 760mm bars seem a little narrow. Would I be better off with a flatter, wider bar and a longer stem with a steeper angle? My current stem is 50mm long with a 6 degree rise. What would you do, Henry? That's quite a mouthful, that one. That's quite a hefty yeah. question. This is uh, what's actually with this um, whole setup. I think it's actually really interesting because on one hand, if you wanted to raise the front end, you could add, um, you know, add height beneath the frame. So in terms of longer forks, ah, okay, yeah. know, more axle to crown. And what that would do is, of course, raise the front end, which might negate the issues you've got in terms of height. Yeah. But then in turn, that's going to reduce the reach because it's not on a vertical plane as they come higher, they're actually coming back closer towards you. Sure. So then it's going to eat into the reach, which it sounds like, you know, he doesn't want to do. Yep. So the rise, the riser bars are actually a really good way of actually sort of isolating the problem. Because when you add riser bars, as opposed to something like, um, you know, stem spaces, yeah. when you add stem spaces, you're moving along that plane. Yeah, but yeah when on the diagonal bars, again. Yeah, it's vertical. So you can actually increase your front end height without eating into your reach figure. And I suppose if you were to jack up the front with a longer set of forks, you would then slacken the seat tube angle as well? You would slacken the seat so tube angle as well. So then climbing might become a little bit more uncomfortable, a bit more difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's a really difficult thing. It sounds essentially like you've got some, I hate to say it, but fundamental problems in terms of fit on this bike. 
it's too small possibly. It, potentially something along those lines. Um, but it seems like you're going about it with a really the right way. And I would say exploring the um, the six degree wise, um, so you said you got six degree wise stem. You can, you can go, they don't necessarily look aesthetically yep. like, you know, aggressive and all the things, but that doesn't really matter. If you've got a high rise stem, then yeah. you'd basically be able to negate some of those issues. And I did have a look and you could get some, you know, some 780 bars with about 70 mil rise. I did a quick Google. Uh, okay. So that would probably be able to find it about right. I think if it was me, I'd be more inclined to do that, like you said, than jack's, jack it up with some bigger forks and affect the ride characteristics, and but make it comfier using a correct bar stem combo. Because remember, we were out, we were out in Chile and we saw there was one participant in Andy's Pacifico that yes. had a really unique setup. He'd actually got almost some BMX riser bars. He did, yeah, some low BMX bars. Mm, but it really worked for him and he was loving it. So, yep. you know, I think bike fit is, you know, the clues in the name, it's got to fit you. Yeah, for and sure. And it's difficult because we all do want our bikes to look like the pros' bikes, but that's not always important. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, on to the next question. It is one from Glenn Patterson. Now, he says, in terms of suspension, what impact does the length of swing arm have? Is longer better? Now, this is a really good question. You, you, you like to ride your bikes in a certain way, pretty fast. We're uh, gonna come yeah. back into the suspension bit just in a second. But in terms of ride characteristics, how would you decide having, you know, having a longer rear center to, compared to a shorter one? It depends, uh, so I, I'm quite a playful rider, I think. So the shorter the back end, um, with regards to not thinking about the suspension at the moment, like you said, but obviously being able to pop it for manuals uh, and flick it around, I do quite like the shorter back end, especially for UK riding. However, when we were out like, again back in Chile and you hop on the longer the poly, uh, the stability and the way it tracks over the ground is much better for it. Mm. Because also when you've got a, yeah, I think I think that the two are very much interwoven. You know, when you have a um, a slacker head angle, for yep. instance, and you get that more stability or longer wheelbase, you do then ride your bike harder. So you can't really isolate it from the suspension aspect. Yeah. Because then it demands a different different setup. Yeah. Sure. Um, the actual specifics when you have a longer um, when you have a longer swing arm, it's basically able to actuate more leverage upon the shock because it is just a bigger lever. Yeah, of course, you, yeah, just the way that it pivots yeah. from here to here. Exactly, it's like a big complete. spanner. Yeah. Now that in itself does mean there's more, um, because, because there's a large amount of leverage, it's gonna deliver better small bump. Okay. Because each small bump, which might only be a flutter on the trail, is gonna have more more leverage oh, upon the shock. Every day's a school day. Yeah, so that, that that's one kind of, if you look at something like, I would think, maybe like a specialized demo, where yeah. it actually goes around the bottom bracket. Yes. That's about, that's a pretty long swing arm you've got there, or at least yeah, it's on a four bar, but it, it gets pretty long. Yeah. So something like that is um, really, really good for small bump. However, mm. obviously bikes demand different things at different parts of their travel. Yeah. So what that means is if you have a particularly high leverage rate through a, a great bigger uh, long swing arm, it then means you can blow through mid stroke or even end stroke. Mm. So what bike designers are doing, it's actually very clever is they're, you know, especially with this kind of new wave of longer travel bikes that have longer swing arms, you know, we're going to some, something like the Polar, for instance, I think yeah. it's a 455 rear yeah. end. Now what that means is that you get the small bump initially, but because the, the linkage is, or in the case of the Polo, it's basically like a, I suppose like a twin link, um, suspension linkage, and it basically gives different amounts of leverage at different parts of the travel. So you can get something that is very, um, has a large amount of leverage at the beginning of the stroke. Yeah. And what that means is it's gonna, you know, get through all that in early part of preload and stiction of an air shock. Oh. And then it can, you know, ramp out and... So that'll be why you see on like, say the leverage ratios when, when certain companies for their their bikes might put the, the suspension charts up, you'll see that it'll go in an S, it'll, mm. it'll ramp up quite quick, then mellow, and yeah. then almost go back yeah. up again at the end of the stroke. Totally. So it is, it is there, there is a, a lot to do with that and it's all kind of, about fine tuning the ride characteristics. And so is leverage, large amounts of leverage, a good thing? Yes and no, is, <laughs> it really depends. Uh, can I add a bonus bit question to this? Is simpler better? So say an orange that is a single pivot, mm -hmm. where it does just pivot. So the, you know, say if you had a, an orange, it's a single pivot, would a longer back end make much of a difference? Because then it is just pivoting. So. Like you said, the longer the back end, the more the less force required to actuate small bump and stuff. Yeah, I mean it depends it depends what you want. I mean there are two different things happening. I suppose you have your compression tune 
and you also have your um, and you also have your spring rate. Yep. And finding a balance between the two is going to be really important. But also, you've got to imagine that coming back on the rebounding stroke, although it's better now that dampers are kind of more sophisticated and you get closed circuit dampers and you know cartridge dampers and all this sort of yep. thing, as opposed to the open bath stuff of yesteryear. But what that means is the longer the arm, if you've got a really heavy wheel, okay, then it, the leverage is going to be magnified going back as well. So it's it's it is Gosh. very complicated, and it's um, you know, I mean, the orange is a great example in that they can basically position, I mean, you get into, I think we need to stop this, I'm going to go I, into, I'm going you know to go what, I was going to say, we could delve into this a long way down yeah. the rabbit hole, couldn't we? Should but, we move on? Yes. All right, okay, what have we got? Marcos Schramm. Benefits of a single speed, go. Ben Ooh. Benefits of a single speed from a man called Schramm, I'm surprised. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. Yeah, I don't I know if that's even... maybe Sh Shimano industrial ah. espionage at play. Sneaky, <laughs> sneaky. I think benefits of a single speed, one, it's just fun. Yes. Have you ever yeah. done much single speeding? N uh, only jump bikes. Yeah. But they, like you said, they're fun. Simplicity. Simplicity. Mm. Literally, I don't want to say nothing to go wrong, but compared to a 12-speed group set now, mm. oh, yeah. you chuck that jump bike around, land on it, God knows what. <laughs> she comes up smiling every time, almost. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think as well, like with, um, with your kind of more pedally bikes, I think it can actually really liven up a trail. Yeah. I would strongly recommend, if you haven't tried it, getting on a single speed bike over winter and just going up, you know, something like a trail centre climb, which might before been quite boring. Yeah, yeah. Having to really engage your brain yeah. and thinking about when you want to put the power down, etc. Oh, yeah. Actually really livens up the experience a fair bit. Imagine if it was belt drive as well. Imagine if it was belt drive. <laughs> Ooh, smooth operator. Wow. That would be... Mind blown. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the next question is from Alec and he says, I have a set of Michelin DH22s and they have not seated properly. I won't go over 40 PSI because I'm afraid they're going to explode, which seems like a perfectly rational fear. Yes. <laughs> would you advise, what would you advise? And is this a serious issue? So seat, getting tires to seat, what would your thing be? My thing would be, uh, did you say they're tubeless? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. so they're tubeless in here? I'm assuming well, let, they're well, let's go on the assumption that they're tubeless. So mm -hmm. one, uh, the old soapy water trick. Soapy water trick. Helps them pop onto the bead a lot easier rather than just a dry tire on bare metal. Yeah. Soapy water, just with a paintbrush or just a little spray, all the yeah. way around, both sides, yeah. that'll help them pop on, especially at 40 psi. Yeah, totally. That can that's um, your best bet. Yeah. The other one is something we talked about in the show quite a long time ago now. But if you get into the back of a door hinge. <laughs> So you open a door and the hinge will open up at the wall side, kind of at the hinge end. Yeah. You put the tire in there and you close the door and then you just and take it from either side. It is uh, it, amazing. Wow. Yeah. It, it, it's, the problem is if you've got white walls and you live with somebody that doesn't want well, the house white the walls tire. dirtied. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? If either has white walls, okay. you can infuriate everyone involved. I don't, I'll be honest, I don't say I'd ever see my mother being happy, it's all me no, crying. But it does work. Okay, yeah, it really top does tips. Work. That's why you're the World Cup mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Bug Boy. Uh, da -da -da. I'm on a Santa Cruz 5010 at 130 mil travel. I'd like to experiment with upping the fork to 140. Is it as easy as throwing a longer damper and air spring in there? Will this be a significant positive change? That's, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got a couple of different elements. So your first thing is the actual uh, sort of chassis of the fork. Now, normally I would expect you can, I don't know what, what fork exactly running, but 10 um, mil, they can normally, they have, yeah, they have a bit does. of, you know, they make one chassis which suits multiple different lengths. Yes. This is especially easy if you've got RockShox fork because it will say the travel options on the side. Oh, it does. Yes. On the yeah, side correct. of the, the sag indicators. Um, so that's, that's the first thing, assuming that that's all very well and good. Mm -hmm then you can, um, actually a quick note with that as well, if you do have, say, a Fox fork, yeah. you can plumb in that product ID into Fox's website and it will give you a lot oh, of technical information. it does, information. yes, it's like a four or five digit yeah, super sticker useful. on the back of the fork, isn't it? Yeah, totally, so that will give you a lot of the technical yep. information. The, you know, swapping the air spring is relatively inexpensive um, and isn't too much of a problem. Okay. The issue is, when you, when the fork is, the fork length is set by the air spring, that's A-OK. -okay. 
when the airspring wants to take the fork longer, but it's basically pulling the damper apart, uh, that's your issue. So if it's just swapping out the air spring, it's relatively simple and inexpensive. Yep. When you get to swapping out the damper, I mean, it sounds like there's something you're uh, prepared to do almost, but um, it can cause you real problems because as it reaches full stroke and it rebounds to full stroke, it's not you know pulling out on the air spring, yep. it is pulling the damper apart. Okay. And that is, no, 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 no. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> we do, do not, not do that. that. Oh, no, no. Um, will it be a positive change? Yes. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it depends. For I would say so. Yeah. I like to get rowdy, so. Yeah, I mean, it really depends what you what you ride for, etc. I mean, up to 10 mil, it sounds like a pretty safe bet to, yeah. to make it a bit more capable, slacken up the bike yes. a bit. And, um, yeah. If you yeah. want to know, actually, I'm going to do a shameless plug. Shameless plug away. If you want to know what overforking a bike may have effect, like the effects may be, then uh, I did do a video all on it, yes. overforking. Yeah. Um, have a little look. It does explain the negatives and positives of putting a, granted in the video, fair longer travel mm -hmm. video, a uh, video fork on a bike. But um, I think a 140 on a 130 frame yeah, is fine. It sounds Sounds, mm. yeah, bread and butter, really. Yeah. Now, the last question is from a name I sadly can't quite pronounce, but um, is it good to ride with a worn drivetrain? Can it destroy the bike in some way? It's not good to ride with a worn drivetrain, no. That's the short answer. No, that's, that's the long and short of it. it uh, it's just going to wear the drivetrain out even more. It's just going to kill it Basically. completely. You're going to just get to the point where you'll have to replace all of it. So if you start riding with a worn cassette, say, that's going to have an effect on the chain, chain ring, and just wear everything and down. Yeah, you just, and then when it means when you do come to replace it, you just end up chasing the problem around. Exactly, yeah. So you can't just, if you replace just the chain, then, and leave the cassette, then the chain's going to slip on the cassette because the teeth of the cassette are all worn, and vice versa. And yeah, like you said, you just end up doing bit by bit. Something that I've come to really, <laughs> a noise I've come to really resent in, in my old age, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is when the chain does get worn, it gets kind of baggy. If you're riding a lot of bike park, yep. the noise of the chain slapping yeah. around. And that's more from side to side yeah. as opposed to up and down, isn't it? And that is infuriating and yeah. can actually be, generate a huge amount of noise. I would also say that sometimes if, uh, if you are putting large amounts of power yeah. through the bike, a worn chain, you know, if you're plumbing it for a jump yeah. and, it, and it breaks, it could go south very quickly. Yeah. So, uh, no is the short answer. Yeah. No, no is the long answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> just really no is just, yeah. just... Yeah, just replace it. Yeah, I mean, again, imagine like, say your chain snaps, mech goes in the wheel, there yeah. goes your wheel, oh, yeah. snap the mech hanger, there's, there's all kinds of no's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is it for this week's Ask GMBN Tech. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to get your questions in the comments and hopefully we can feature it on the show. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much for having me, Henry. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next time.